Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the College Express Podcast. Today, I'm joined with two of my favorite ladies, as always, and now, never, ever, ever again, <laughs> which is probably the saddest part of the day, saddest part of the week, saddest part of the year. It's very oh. sad. So, right to my immediate right, your stage left, is Mackenzie <laughs> and Kara. Yeah, this is my last podcast, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll be leaving for a new job, but I'm going to miss all of you so much. I love doing this podcast. Thanks for watching. It's been fun, but now it's going to be bad. It's going <laughs> to be it's great. Awful. We're going to put just a picture watching. of you just in the corner. It's going to get better, just believe me. <laughs> and uh, we have our newest guest today, Taylor. Yes. So if you would like to introduce yourself, tell you what you do, tell you what you do, tell them what you do. <laughs> about uh, here and then also where you went to school. Yeah, so I'm Taylor. I'm a digital advertising associate here at Carnegie Dartlet, uh, and I went to Bryant University and just graduated this past May. So, yeah. Awesome. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> so this month we're talking all about... Study abroad. Study abroad. <laughs> so we're going to jump right into it and uh, have some fun. So our first question comes from at Taylor Elise 01, who's written in several times and is actually a student writer on College Express. So thanks so much for writing in to us, Taylor. Uh, and the question is, what is the best time to study abroad? That is a good question. Midnight. <laughs> yeah. Good one. Yeah, after you. Yeah. That's Wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are a bunch of different options. So uh, I studied abroad the fall of my junior year. A lot of colleges will build it in so that it's during your junior year. So you have some classes at um, school and then some classes abroad before wrapping it up at home uh, in your senior year. But there are also a lot of schools that will have campuses where they let you study abroad your first semester of freshman year. Uh, fun fact, a lot of places do that and offer you the option freshman year. Uh, to study abroad because that means that they have housing for everyone. A little mm -hmm. secret tidbit. Uh, mm -hmm. They might not have housing provided for everyone on campus, so they say, we have a campus in, I don't know, Madrid, uh, that you can study abroad in your first semester. So if, you, if you're if you ready to do something like that, go for it. Uh, I did it, like I said, fall of my uh, junior year, and I thought that was the perfect time, uh, at least for my major. And I know a lot of people who majored in certain, um, I think CSI, um, were uh, computer science, informatics, not crime scene yeah. investigation. <laughs> yeah, I know digital forensics is yeah. huge at Stanford. And they, yeah. um, they had it like built in so that you could take classes in Dublin that specific semester. Uh, so really just kind of look, looking at your classes, seeing what's available and what your specific major is built around as well. So many schools offer programs like that too. Where they, like, specific majors, they'll take you abroad and they just plan the whole thing for you. Yep. They get the housing, mm -hmm. classes, you don't have to do any of that. My school didn't have that. I'm sorry. I did go in the spring of my junior year, though, and I feel like junior year is, like, a huge time, really time for people to go. I don't, maybe because it's, like, you're mature in college mm -hmm. and, you're like, not a newbie, like, a freshman or sophomore, <laughs> but it's also, like, not yeah. your last year because sometimes you just want to be on campus if you're friends last year. I feel like that's, that's so good. true. Like with your first and second year, you're just like meeting everyone, making friends, and mm -hmm. then you don't want to miss your senior year because they go with fun activities. So junior year is like the perfect time to go. I don't yeah, know yeah. I so it's a nice yeah. break too. I feel like by yeah. junior year, you're just like yeah. Gotta get I off also campus. liked <laughs> going in the fall because I worked all summer. So by working all summer, I had funds to spend on things like groceries and travel <laughs> and. Um, like other life expenses, like I forgot a raincoat. I don't know why I went to Ireland without a raincoat, but I did. So I had to go buy one. <laughs> it was it was Constant. not the best decision. That's I, I'd also throw the wrench in. Everybody's talking about like personal wise, but uh, also depending on where you're studying and if you're going specifically for your major, and you have a professor in mind. Some of the professors won't teach certain semesters. Uh, so again, at Champlain, uh, we use it as an example all the time, but yep. uh, one of the campuses was Montreal, and it was a video game studio, and so I believe it was Ubisoft, I could be yeah. not right about that, uh, but like there was very much a drive for kids to go when this professor was there, because mm -hmm. he worked on certain games and they wanted to learn from him. Uh, yeah. So that kind of jumped up the increase for that specific time, too. Yeah. But I agree that junior year is probably the most comfortable yeah. Um, you 
as Mackenzie mentioned, you've matured and you kind of know <laughs> your schedule. College matured. Like, um, you know what you can handle and yeah. um, when to have fun, but you know, still get the stuff done. So I think junior year is a nice fit just from a life. You're also like used yeah. to being away from home at that point. Too. Yeah. Yeah. But like going to another country is just another step. Yeah. <laughs> but my cousin um, wanted to study abroad and he is an engineering major and it was really hard for him to find a good time to study abroad because their courses like you have to match up the courses that they have at the schools when you go abroad to the classes you need to take at your school and engineering it can be kind of a tricky major to match up because the classes are so specific so he had to go in the summertime which is also a big option for people like that who can't do it with their major or like I know nursing majors do that a lot too yeah yeah, yeah. that kind of goes into like what I was saying earlier about I wasn't able to study abroad because like there were certain classes that I had to take at my school they're mm-hmm. like upper level ones like specific to the school that I needed for my degree um so it was hard to fit that in but one cool thing that Brian did is this thing called um it's like SIE it's basically like your sophomore international experience so you go for like 10 days over like a break or something so if you can't fit that in because of like your major or because you transferred like it's just another option you know if like the timing just doesn't work so I was about to say we're talking about like semesters abroad but there are other options as well for study abroad like you could do summer courses abroad a lot of um, colleges will have that they have um, alternative spring breaks where you get to go to oh, yeah. abroad and do some volunteering stuff. So it's not necessarily like study abroad, yeah. but um, they're also, I know that Champlain had, and they didn't offer it while I was there, I would have taken it, but they had like a photography in, in Italy class, um, and my brother took really a theater cool. in Greek class, yeah. so he got to go um, after, it was after the semester had finished, like he'd done his finals and everything, and they took a trip as a class to Greece, and they went to all different places. Uh, Champlain had one there where they got to go to Cuba. Wow. When it was more difficult to go to Cuba, even. So, um, <laughs> that's so yeah. Cool. So, like, things like that, you know. Again, that's pretty... A lot of people do, do it junior year, um, just because... I think it's also just easier to bring like twenty year olds abroad than eighteen year olds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Depends on where you're going too. Like eighteen's just you're an adult at that point. Yeah. You're, Don't you're, need that part. <laughs> I mean, technically, some places sixteen year adults. So it's yeah, like, but yeah. it's like I don't know, just the energy. I feel. I mean, I was. I was also. I was very energetic when I was twenty, but I was also like a more reserved, energetic than I was when I was eighteen. I was like, yeah, I'm abroad, but it wasn't like, I was, <laughs> I don't even know. Please describe your emotions. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm abroad, but I wasn't like, I'm going to go do all this crazy stuff. Like, yeah. I knew more who I was and, like, what I wanted to do while I was abroad rather than, what, than when I was 18 and susceptible to, like, everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I understand that. That's uh, not for college, but we had a foreign exchange program when I was in high school, too. And so it was going to London, and then we had um, the brother's school coming to ours. And so ours is a boy and girl high school. That's where I met my wife. And um, the brother's school was only guys. Mm -hmm. Um, So I didn't go to London. Uh, Emily did, though. So her exchange student that came over was 13, 14 when he came. Mm -hmm. And we were all 17, 18. (laughs) And so just the age gap was so bizarre. And like you just said, handling it with, like, your class group at a certain age yep. and how your class molds you versus as you're older and yeah. a little bit more independent, yep. <laughs> smarter. Yeah. yeah, I would not have been able to handle living in an apartment on my own at 18. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just me. Like, everyone's different, obviously. Mm-hmm. But They do have options to study abroad when you're in high school. They do. Some schools. Some schools. There's, like, some programs you can do, maybe alternative spring breaks. But, again, yeah. that's, like, very dependent on the kind of person you are. How independent you feel, how comfortable your parents are with sending you. Mm-hmm. So that's, yeah. But yeah, yeah, if you want to get a jump on it, I feel like you have more, can have more time in high school. Yep. It's easier with classes. I mean, not more time. You probably have more time in college. But with classes, it's easier yeah. in high school. No, I feel like it was, maybe it's because Champlain had the, had the specific program to go abroad. And I, I would say if you're considering studying abroad now in high school, 
then uh, a good idea is to look at colleges with programs abroad, with campuses abroad, because that's going to be so much easier than later we're going to talk about different programs to choose. But it's going to be so much easier to make sure that those tr credits transfer. Like, you don't even have to worry about if those credits are going to transfer if the program is through your college. My cousin went to school in Clemson, and he sent me pictures of the villa the school owned. And it was the most beautiful yep. villa I've ever seen. I would just go to Clemson just so I could study abroad and yeah. really and stay in that yeah. villa. Tons of places have campuses abroad. Uh, Champlain has two. Um, Clemson has one. Uh, Emerson <laughs> has a castle in the Netherlands, uh, which is a pretty cool program. Uh, Suffolk has one in Spain somewhere. I think Madrid, maybe Barcelona. I think Madrid because I got offered to go there. Uh, Marist has a, a location in Florence. Like there are just uh -huh. there are a lot of colleges of options, and because study abroad mm -hmm. is on the rise, a lot of colleges are making more deals with uh, colleges abroad so that it's easier to get your credits to link up. Yeah, makes sense. We had one in China. It's like Brian Jukai, I think. Hope I, hope I pronounced that right. Keen has one in Weizhou, China. Yeah, so I'm trying to remember Keen? Yeah. Wow. what that school was. But we did a summer program search. It's still on College Express. Yes. You know which one I'm talking about? Yes, I think. Ooh, racking my brain. But that was a high school one, too. Yeah. Uh, and they had it all around. And one of the, the locations was China. Because I remember yeah. making the emails, and I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. And I'm way too old to go on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Champlain also had a, an abroad program for specifically business students where they got to go to Shanghai for the summer. And it was an internship program. So, like, there are also options for that if you don't want to mm -hmm. – if you – are worried about credits transferring, see what options there are for like summer studies through your college that you could do abroad or summer internships abroad because internships are learning experiences as you can see from our last podcast. Our second question is approximately, I can't say that word, approximately <laughs> how much is it to study abroad for a semester, visa, papers, etc. This question was a combination of questions between Ash by underscore Trotter and Bluer Moons. I think I know what you were going there. Oh, I can't even speak right now. Okay, <laughs> move right <around. laughs> To answer the question. Um, so there's no like an exact price for study abroad, and there's really no way to like calculate a price because once you go abroad, you're going to be spending probably more, much more than you think you are. I definitely did. Um, Souvenirs yeah. from everywhere. Yeah. Oh my God. Traveling. And when I went to school and abroad, everyone's like, "Oh, like travel. If you go to Europe, traveling to like other countries in Europe is so cheap." My mind, cheap is like twenty five bucks for a flight. I mean, like, if you book far enough in advance and use Ryanair, yeah. <laughs> Ryanair, yeah. But yeah. I did not do that. I booked like a week in advance and it was like $200 for a flight. So I, know, I booked in advance for a trip to London from Ireland and it was like 80 euro round trip for a flight on Ryanair. See, so don't be stupid like me. You just got to plan ahead. And that's just like fly Ryanair and pray. It's fine. Just pray. pray. <laughs> they always on. land. I shouldn't say that. Yeah. Well, in some capacity. <laughs> yeah. It will touch the ground. <laughs> you usually get there in one piece. <laughs> just don't use the bathroom on the flight because it will cost you extra. Everything costs extra in Ryanair. <laughs> but the flight is so cheap. <laughs> And it's a short flight. You yeah. don't need the bathroom. It's like the mega bus for airplanes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Uh, but going back to the question, um, so definitely the first things you want to look into are if you don't have a passport, getting that really early because that can take a few months. And visa papers. I didn't have to get visa papers because I wasn't in London uh, long enough to need visa papers. But if you're planning on getting a job while you're over there, you do need them. Um, so check out... Um, the requirements, like figure out how long you're going to be there. Uh, I think it's six months. I you don't know. Papers. I didn't have to, I didn't I have to get a visa. I looked at I figured she'd be the one to I did know. not have to get a visa for Ireland because they have a special relationship with the United States. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we had to she like, was get a student secret. card. No, we had to get a student card, and it cost 300 euro. Um, and, yeah, it was, like, super simple. Um, to get, it was really funny because I was coming through customs. I was coming back from London, 
in Ireland, and there were these two guys in front of me who were studying abroad. I, don't, I think they were in Spain or something. They come to Dublin. They were messing around, and the customs official saw them and yelled at them. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm also American. He's going to think I'm with them, and I'm not. <laughs> and he yelled at them when they went through, and I went up, and I gave him my passport and my, my card. And I'm like, hello, sir. It's nice to see you. I mean, I'm, I'm coming back. Don't deport me. Uh, and he looks at my, my card, and he goes, oh, they made you pay the 300 euro. And I said, yep. And he goes, that's a shame. Stamp, you're in. And I'm like, but yeah, the, so you didn't have to pay that. Could you get out? I, I, no, I had to pay the three hundred euro. But the guard was just like, oh, "This is ridiculous. They shouldn't make you have to pay the study here." And I'm like, "I feel the same." Yeah, I didn't have to do that for London. Oh, so maybe you should go to London. So Ireland. maybe, maybe they have a Probably. better relationship. <laughs> um, but my flight was expensive, just a yeah. round trip, which was expected. But you got to make sure you calculate that in. I think it was like a little over a thousand dollars for yeah. that. Um, but actually. Staying in Ireland, in London, now I think I stayed in Ireland. Staying in London was cheaper than staying at URI. Because uh, at the time I was living in a sorority house, so the prices were a little expensive. Um, so, like, room and board was cheaper, meal plans were cheaper, but we also only got two meal plan. I mean, two meals a day instead of three, or like unlimited that you do at school. Um, it was super cheap because we didn't have one. You didn't have a meal plan? <laughs> Not in Ireland. That oh. was, uh, we stayed in a, a long-term hotel, essentially, so we just, we didn't have a cafeteria. It was so they had, like, a kitchen for you? Yep. Oh, that's good. Yep. I feel like they have to uh, supply a Oh, there was a kitchen, yeah, yeah. If you don't have a kitchen. dining hall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we had to, we had to get all the groceries. Um, Little and Aldi are great. They're omnipresent Aldi. in Europe, and Aldi is now making a chance in the U.S. What up? Aldi? Aldi. There is an Aldi near me, like, at home. Yeah. It's the it's only like in Salem, right? I don't know if you near Salem, but... No. no. Salem, Mass? New Hampshire. I would drive up to Salem, New Hampshire. <laughs> Actually, I'm close to Salem, New Hampshire. Yeah. yeah I've sure. never heard of Aldi. It's kind of weird. It's a little weird. It's a little weird, but... Walk in. It's what kind of food is it? Unorganized, do you think? No. I mean, I'm, I'm used to the way yeah. it was, because that, that was one of my grocery oh, yeah. stores in Europe. Um, but oh, it's, it's like a grocery store. Like. Like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> grocery store, grocery store. Oh, okay. <laughs> Little Aldi and Tesco. Uh, and make sure you go to Tesco, not Tesco es- Express, because Tesco Express is basically like a gas station convenience store, and mm-hmm. things are up charge. Yeah. We had Sansbury's in London. That was pretty nice. Do you have um, Spencer's? No, Marks and Spencer's, that's it. We did have Spencer's. It was on Marks and Spencer's um, and Dunn's High Street, so it was more expensive. Dunn's is also good. Um, I went there. That was like one of the things we had to do was like go there and then also get um, chicken from Nando's when I went there. I was like, those are the two Nando's. things. Nando's. <laughs> Nando's. And I yes. was like, oh, that's that really cool. They yeah, have it. They do have Nando's in the U.S., yeah. but not in Massachusetts. It's in New York. You're talking about Nando's Perry Perry? Nando's Perry Perry. Like, it's the chicken place? Oh, yeah, the chicken place. Yeah, they have them in know, Chicago. Oh, really? Yeah, they <laughs> have it in the Chicago. Chicken they have it in Washington. <laughs> yeah. They do not have it in the U.S. I don't know if it's as popular here, but it was really it was really good. Yeah, I it depends impressed. on the um, cultures around you. Yeah. So, but they have it in Washington. They have it in Chicago. Um, they need it in Mass. I agree. Yeah, they they do. Really good Perry I'm Perry so surprised sauce. Nando's hasn't made it around across here. Nando's, come to Boston. Nando's. What up? <laughs> Tag in. No, but I went to London to visit one of my friends, and that's, like, one thing. Like, this can't be the case for everyone, mm-hmm. but I was super fortunate to make really good friends that lived um, in London and near mm-hmm. Manchester. So um, even though I didn't get to study abroad for a whole semester, they were super awesome in letting me come visit them for a while mm-hmm. and stay with them. And... The cool thing about that is you have a lot more flexibility. So when I booked my flights, I could look for, like, when traveling there was, like, the cheapest. And, I mean, my round-trip flights were, like, $300 for that. Cause total I went in, or each? Total. What? It was in, yeah, I went, in, um, I went in January last year. And just having a place to stay there, like, I mean, that's one thing, like, you know, if you make friends with people or, like, know people that you could maybe go with and stay in, like, cheaper accommodations for a shorter time. Because I feel like people think they have to study abroad like that's the only time they'll get to travel when they're in college but there's so many opportunities to, yep. to do that after and like you'll have time so if you can't afford it like if your school doesn't offer like yep. good funding or like opportunities for scholarships with study abroad I would just say don't feel like you have to yep. because there's no point in like breaking the bank when you can like have those experiences yeah. later you know so. yeah 
And my, a lot of my friends came and visited me when I was abroad for like oh, a yeah. week yeah. during um, spring break. Um, and they just slept on my floor, so all they had to pay for <laughs> was the flight. <laughs> they were, I'm like, okay, if you're comfortable on the floor, yeah. that's where you're busy. I don't have a lot of room. But yeah, if you have friends who are going abroad and you can't go for the full semester, maybe just go for a week, sleep yep. on their floor. Yeah, that's a good idea, too. Sleep on anyone's floor. Also, wrapping back to the question. <laughs> uh, wrapping back to the question, uh, I have two things. First, um, about yeah. visas. Uh, I actually had a friend who was a, um, he had dual citizenship. Uh, he, his family's from Wales, so he was able to get dual citizenship there. And if you're like under 18 and get, and you have like the ability to get dual European citizenship and you're thinking of going to school in Europe, uh, definitely do that because under 18, it's relatively cheap in the span of things. Like, um, I could technically have gotten my Italian citizenship and it would have cost like two hundred dollars so let's say it's a hundred bucks um and if you have an eu passport in uh, a lot of countries within the eu uh you can study and live and work anywhere in the eu without extra charge so like if i had gotten my italian passport when i was 17 uh, and been a dual citizen of the u.s and um, italy i could have studied in ireland for free or not for free, but like without paying the extra amount. <laughs> Who knows this? <laughs> Me. <laughs> um, Enjoy this while we have it. Also, also the like we were saying the overall cost like changes, um, but you can get scholarships uh, if you have a program through your school. If your school is like super pro students going abroad, ask the financial aid office if you can, or the study abroad office if you can get extra scholarship to study abroad, because a lot of schools like Champlain, it didn't cost me any extra, technically speaking. Uh, like I think housing was a little bit extra, uh, but it didn't cost any more tuition wise than it did going to Champlain. Um, because it was within the school. Uh, but if you go to like third party programs, it might cost you more, it might cost you less. So look into things like that. Look into scholarships to save that money. Yeah, I think we also talked about um, high school earlier too. Yep. And if you were like me, going from paper route to uh, retail, <laughs> saving up money, save up your money and so that you can do stuff like that when you get there. Um, I know obviously college is already expensive and this question is expressing that how do I even get to that point where I can mm -hmm. travel abroad, abroad <laughs> and uh, feel comfortable doing so. Uh, work when you can, um, save up. Uh, that, again, is why junior year is probably the most comfortable, too, because yeah. you get more of a nest egg that you can use and uh, abuse. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that uh, it, it really depends on the person and what, where you're going, how much it costs to live there, because uh, food in Ireland is going to be a lot more expensive than if you go to China. Like Prague. Or, yeah, yeah, wherever. Um, so there's a, so many things to consider, and... That's why we can't give you a straight answer yeah. to this question. Also, look up things like cost of living. Mm -hmm. um, just so that you're research. more aware, yeah. You know, like what the prices are for like regular groceries mm -hmm. that you'd normally want to buy, prices for going out, you know, the exchange rate. I was not very good at figuring out the exchange rate. All right, so question number three is all about safety and traveling abroad. And so there are many things to consider when you travel abroad. It's... Obviously, you're stepping outside of your comfort zone. Most of the time, you are going with a group of people, so make friends and make sure that you stick with those friends as you go anywhere. Uh, make sure that you have somebody that you can check in on um, and vice versa, as well as whatever the student uh, to faculty is. So make sure that you have faculty contact. Make sure that you're still able to. It's a lot easier now to just get on the internet and Skype whoever yep. or do a FaceTime. doesn't matter. Um, but make sure you have those contacts set up have all your emergency stuff. That's the first um, thing they had us do is like yep. plug in all the emergency phone numbers of like your advisor, your teachers, and like the actual emergency nine, number nine, because it's nine. not 911. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you want to be careful that you're not plugging in 911 and <laughs> nobody's coming. <laughs> I, think, I think it works internationally, but you should call 999 because it works faster. Oh, is that awesome. what you were going to say? Yeah. I thought you were saying 911. Like, no, 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 999. <laughs> that's it, right? Yeah, yeah. That's it. I'm pretty sure that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, I'm uh, pretty sure it's not. Just check nine. before you yeah. dial the phone. Yeah. Don't. Um, don't, don't just take our word for it. <laughs> uh, 
Also, for money, uh, I think, again, it, as times have changed, it's not as big of an issue as it was, but like I'm very much a cash guy even to today, yep. so please don't look me on the street. But uh, <laughs> make sure you have backup credit cards and, yep. uh, and you know yep. all those things. Make sure you have your, D, uh, your passport. Passport. Uh, Keep it safe. Never carry it with you. Yeah. Uh, make sure that's in the lockbox at the hotel or wherever you're staying. Yep. Um, make sure that that's like one of the first things that you have and then yep. go somewhere because if you get pickpocketed, it's gone. Yeah, you're going to have a bad time. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> our program took... Uh, the first they had to send a copy and then they took copies of it so that if we lost our copy, mm -hmm. um, if we lost our passport, they could take it and bring us to the uh, embassy and get it fixed. Yeah, so make sure... Know where the embassy have, is. Yeah, know where the embassy <laughs> is. Uh, and have copies of your passport so that you can bring it to the like US embassy and be like, hi, my passport got stolen. This is a huge issue. Help me out. <laughs> I think, yeah, it's also important uh, in, in my scenario, I don't know if you guys did it too, but having the copy with your faculty, yep. uh, but keeping one at your parents' house or wherever your, your home body so is too. so many copies of my um, passport. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, it's helpful to have. Know how many copies you have. So yeah. Over prepared than, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Know, and then not need it yep. rather than vice versa. But, uh, and uh, so I'm just going to go into a fun story. Uh, and so it's uh, all about the safety and then also about um, how it, it potentially can mess you up um, and not scary. Uh, it's kind of scary. Um, <laughs> but my friend Steve uh, was with me through freshman year. We ended up, uh, I've talked about him in the podcast in the past. We um, lived with different roommates. We both couldn't stay in our roommate. We ended up moving in together the second half of freshman year. I stayed with him for two and a half years after that. Uh, and at one point he ended up going to Montreal. I, sophomore year junior, yeah probably junior second yeah. semester and so when he was in Montreal uh, Steve decided to explore on his own and so he was just walking the streets uh, looking to have a good time um, and he met somebody and was talking with them they were like hey like we're gonna go out to this party why don't you follow me here Steve's like normal looking guy okay sure why not so follows him to one house follows him to another house and then Steve starts getting a little sketched out to all the different places that he's going. So he ended up leaving, and then almost every single corner that he was at, he would turn around and this guy was following him. So he got back to the hotel room that night, talked to his faculty member, and was like, listen, i got to get out of here. This, like, yeah. He was very paranoid. I think he took it a little bit too far. Uh, but his roommates, uh, Carl, and I'm trying to remember who else was, but Carl contacted me. He was like, do you know where Steve is? I said, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. He's with you in Montreal. Yeah. He's like, no, he's gone. He's gone. Uh, so we had no idea until, I don't know, three or four days later that Steve was now back in the States. Um, because of all the different kerfuffle, uh, he ended up not taking that semester. He missed all of his courses, and then he wow. had to stay back a year. He ended up switching majors, uh, nice. and he graduated the same year as I was over, nice. uh, which was fun because I got to go back and celebrate with those guys. But... Uh, always go out with people that you know. Yep. Uh, don't just randomly decide, even if you're comfortable defending yourself. Or Stranger whatever. danger, guys. Uh, <laughs> making new friends is not that way. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I, yeah. Well, I mean, I went on a couple dates when I was in Ireland, um, and I met them in public, and I met them in public several times yeah. before ever, like, becoming friends outside of that. And I have, like, a very good friend now um, but, but like, and, and I talk to people in pubs in Ireland, but like, don't just, don't lose your common sense. Don't mm. follow a person you don't know yep. to a house that's random. Like, yeah. that don't happened. forget all your stranger danger. Yeah, that <laughs> happened to me and my friends when I was in London. There were three of us, just three girls, and we went out. And it was a woman who was like, we were outside just talking to a bunch of people. And she was like, at this point it was really late, probably two o'clock in the morning. And she was like, you guys should come with me, like, there's this no. bar that's still open, like, yeah. down here will be so fun, da, 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 and one of my friends was like, oh my god, yeah, like, that's no. such a great idea, like, it's, we're having so much fun, and then my friend who lived in London was like, oh no, like, we're not leaving, we're not going with you, ever, no, like, don't, <laughs> like, get away from my friends, um, so don't be that 
American abroad that's like, yeah, let's go, you know. So. <laughs> Take <Sure. laughs> you know, Haven't you guys watched Taken? Like, yeah. <laughs> like if you wouldn't do it here, you wouldn't go to with a stranger somewhere. Like, don't do it there. Yeah. There's still. Just and if you would, yeah, just because they're attracted. Just make them nicer. Kind of like, <laughs> yep. So I actually got pickpocketed <laughs> when oh. I was abroad. I was tra- so I studied abroad in London and I was traveling to Barcelona. And everybody, like, my grandparents were very scared. I was getting a pickpocket, and I'm like, can you calm down? Like, it's not going to happen to me. Was it your grandparents that pickpocketed? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they came to Barcelona <laughs> just to prove their point. Um, like, everyone at home kept warning me about being safe with my wallet. And mm-hmm. I'm always, like, pretty good about knowing where my bag is at all times. Um, but it was our last night in Barcelona. And a few of our people from our hostel, they all got people together, and we were all going out for the night. Um, and we even had, like, a guide to take us to all the different places. <laughs> we can organize our call <laughs> yeah, kind of thing. Spots. That's yeah. Um, so we get on the subway. I didn't under- even understand how to work the subway there, so I was very confused. Good and scary. it was all the people from our hostel, so I felt pretty safe, but I still had, like, a crossbody bag, mm-hmm. and it was had a buckle over it, and it was zipped. And I'm like, okay, good. There was one lady on the subway who kept on, like, getting a little too close to me, but, like, I couldn't feel her touching my bag or anything, so I'm like, it's fine. We were on the subway for two stops. We get off, and I look down, and my bag is open, and I had a just a wallet, like, inside my purse, and they had just taken the full wallet. It had my license, oh. my credit card. My parents gave me a travel credit card, all my cash, wow. and that was it. Luckily, I didn't have too much cash. Um, and I had no idea where I was in Barcelona. I go up to our guy, and I'm like, I just got pickpocketed. He goes, yeah, I warned you before this. I'm like, well, that doesn't help me now. Yeah, but. you just pickpocket him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, do you want to just keep coming out? I'm like, I have no money. i got to go yeah. cancel all my credit yeah. cards. Yeah. Like, I can't come out. That's so stressful. So I had to figure out, we had, me and my friends, like, had to figure out how to get back because we couldn't figure out how to get back into the subway. So we had to walk back to our hostel in the middle of the night. So luckily my friends were very kind mm-hmm. and they walked with me. Um, and I had to call my parents. Like, for me it was mm-hmm. midnight, but yep. it was earlier for them. And, like, I couldn't even call my bank. Yep. I couldn't get a hold of my bank, so I had to call my mom. And she had to cancel all the cards. And luckily my cousin was coming to London yep. um, the next month, and she was able to bring me a new license and a new credit card, and my mom was able to order all of that yep. for me. Which I was very awesome. thankful for, but yeah, if I learned anything. One, I had the so my with my purse, I had the zipper like on the back side of me, and that was my first mistake. Right on the front. So put the the crossbody yep. bag on the other side, so have the, the zipper, zipper on the front. is like in your sight. But also, don't walk around with both your credit cards. Like mm-hmm. I had, yeah, I had my debit card and my parents' credit card, so maybe you don't, you don't need both. Yep. Mm-hmm. So leave one in the locker. <laughs> so. One of the first things they tell you about safety with the internet is don't post your location because you don't want people to know that you're on vacation or anything. When you study abroad, you're away. And you want to make sure that you post your location. Uh, I went to Ireland alone um, about a year and a half ago for my 24th birthday. And I made sure to post at least once a day and I posted my location so that my parents knew where I was they knew I was safe and they knew I was having fun um so especially where you're abroad and your family is going to be worried post your location have your find my friends app open Mm -hmm. uh, on things like that that way you you know every your your family knows where you are and you know that you're safe um that's I think one of the one of the most important parts of safety because like I said you're not supposed to post when you're abroad because or when you're on vacation because of like um robbers and things like that and whatever but post your location when you're abroad so that your family it helps them calm down a little bit um also generally stranger danger um if you put down a glass and I went to Ireland so pub culture very huge not necessarily like not even like alcohol pub culture but just like just pub culture is huge and it's a huge part of like going abroad to Ireland to London where you have your local and you don't have to drink alcohol if you go there I a ton of Irish people are saying they're drinking Diet Cokes all night um if you put your cup down 
do not pick it up back up. If you've left it, if you go to the bathroom, bring your cup with you. Also, if someone offers to buy you a drink, you're the one that has to take it from the bartender. Yeah, yeah, the don't bar, yeah. don't, don't turn away from the bartender. Watch the bartender make the drink. Um, again, even if it's non-alcoholic, like especially if it's non-alcoholic, like eat, eat, just eat anything. Just anything. Uh, yeah, that's and again, that's you something you. you can even apply to being alive yeah. in <laughs> this <laughs> country. Yeah. Just, just general safety. Have you um, seen? Uh, they just—it's a relatively new thing, but it's a coaster that you can bring with you to mm -hmm. the bar. And when you leave, you put the coaster upside down on top of your glass, which mm -hmm. is kind of gross. But um, if somebody tampers with it while you're gone, you get an instant notification on your phone that's oh, like, that's yeah, cool. somebody moved your glass. Uh, so I, if you're into that, you mm -hmm. just do... take it to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah a yeah, lot exactly. of especially yeah. they give this to cool they, <laughs> they give this tip to women. So a lot of times in women's room, they just have like a shelf that you can put your glass on, um, and it's just or finish your drink and then go to the bathroom and come yeah. back. But right. like, don't. That's a good I feel like that's always safe. It's yeah. like you just finish it and then use that as your break to use yep. the bathroom. Like, time it out a little bit. Yep. Plus, then you don't have to go to the bathroom this patch page. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Bathroom tips. <laughs> yep. So, but that's a huge safety thing. Um, and, like, always use the buddy system. I, yeah, I admit I traveled alone more often than I should have. Um, because the thing is that, like, when you go abroad, you have this, like, group of, like, 50 people in your group. And one of the whole reasons of going abroad is to meet people internationally, make friends who aren't necessarily just the people you know, uh, but be safe about it. So I would go out to like, I, I made like, I call them hour long friends, where I would go to different pubs and I'd just like chat with the people there. Yeah. Uh, but I did that during broad daylight <laughs> uh, in the middle of the day and in places that I knew were safe. Um, and when you're studying or when you're when you're moving make sure that you study up on like what neighborhoods are safe mm -hmm. and um, also when you're going sure. out if you're like going to another country that you don't know very well or if you're new to the country you're going to always have or have the address of the place that you're staying in but that way at the end of the night if you can't get back you can either oh. get into like a taxi yeah, what do you think i was gonna no, say no, no. I, I did the yep. same thing after one night of having too many beverages um, I couldn't remember where I was yeah. or where I, like, my hotel room was. Yes. <laughs> you, like, write like, like, your forehead at the beginning of the movie. This is where I belong. Bring me here. This is a movie where there's just tattoos. Yeah. 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 Also, I mean, <laughs> just, just <wake> up. <laughs> bringing that up as well, in a lot of countries, the drinking age is, like, 18, and if you're studying abroad, th that means that you are of legal drinking age, and just be very careful with that. Mm -hmm. um, just because that's, I mean... A, to a lot of people, it's a whole new realm. Um, so be safe with that, like know your limits, all that general stuff. And in a lot of places, it's also not as like. You will also stand out as American if yeah. you get like really, you really don't, drunk. Yeah, a lot of places it's not out. like very popular to get as, as drunk as most Americans Like in do. London, they, there's a bar on like every corner. So yeah. they go out after work pretty much every day and they just get like a couple drinks. Yeah. They always knew when the Americans came in because they'd be like shots and yep. on like a Thursday. Yep. So just oh, just be nice and yeah. just yeah. respectful yeah. of other cultures and like try not to be that yeah. American. <laughs> I think going back to not drinking. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, you were talking about the cross bag. That's part um, of safety, though. I, <laughs> and as a male traveling, do not have the yeah. cross bag. Uh, inside pockets. So yes, uh, that's exactly what I was going to say. Inside pockets are the best way to go about it. Uh, but if you do take off your jacket or whatever you have, make sure you move it to your front pockets mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, when I was in Paris, I was walking and had my wallet on my inside. And I had just like a pamphlet and some other things in my back pocket and that stuff got snatched out. And it was all useless stuff that I didn't need. Yep. But, and I was like, oh. Wow. So yeah, 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 like someone yeah. touched you and you didn't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, um, true about the crossbody bag too. Like whenever I wear mine, I kind of wear it almost in the front just to have it there. Or like if it's on the side, kind of like keep my hand nearby because yep. it's just yeah. Or if you have it's a jacket, you can, you can like wear it. Oh yeah, under the jacket. Yeah, that's wear it a underneath. Good, that's a good one. Too. One of the things they also Fanny warned me about was um, there's a lot of people who walk around <laughs> with like credit card scanners, so. Like, my mom bought me a special yeah, purse yeah. that, yeah. like, you can't scan. RFID, um, make sure that you have an RFID protector around your passport. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things, because they'll have, like, the RFID, like, protector, and then they'll have, like, credit card things. That's so I used that. Yeah, when I went to Ireland, um, when I was just on my own, 
Um, I knew that I was going to have to carry my passport the whole time because I didn't have like a place that I was staying specifically. So I had a vest that I never took off. Uh, and I had an inside pocket and it went right in there. And that's where all my cash was and all my credit cards were. Mm -hmm. um, so that it was safe. You know, when I went to Amsterdam, they we couldn't go to the hostel beforehand because we wasn't in Amsterdam. So we like spent the whole day traveling around yeah. and all I had was a backpack. And I didn't like walking around with a backpack because mm -hmm. someone could easily... Yep. So I actually yeah. got like one a little lock and a key, and I just oh, yeah. locked yeah. the Travel zippers locks. together so someone yeah. couldn't. I did that a lot too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're staying, at it's annoying have, when you have to unlock yeah. it every time you need like yeah. money or something. But definitely yeah. worth it. Though. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if you have, um, if you do stay at a hostel, most of them have lock boxes. So you might have to pay extra. Yeah. yeah. Or or just bring a, the uh, the ones that I went to had like lockers underneath. They didn't have locks on them, so bring your own, like, heavy-duty lock. Here's a locker. It doesn't lock. Yeah. <laughs> and I slept with my passport, like, in my pillow underneath and my wrapped around it. I did that, too. I had, yep. like, my very important valuables, like, under my pillow while yep. I slept. Just because you're in a, a hostel. You're in a room yeah. with, like, yeah. seven People other strangers. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's very common, weird. but very weird. <laughs> also, I saw a, um, be careful when you do Airbnb. Because I saw an article today that was like someone was in an Airbnb and there was a security camera on the wall and they did not know about it. Oh, weird. So read the terms and conditions when you book an Airbnb or I've don't book an Airbnb. Few, <laughs> I've stayed at a few Airbnbs where the person who owns the house is actually staying there too. Yeah. yeah. And like they, I get, they probably put that in yeah. on the website and we just didn't read the fine print like mm. you said. But it was very, it was a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, sure. So just make sure make you're sure aware of what you're agreeing to. Yeah. yeah. Who's going to be there? They don't give you like a password to get in or like a key or lock safe key thing. They're probably yeah. staying there with you. Yeah. True. But <laughs> Actual bed and breakfasts mm -hmm. are the bomb though, I will say. It's true, you can't beat it. Yeah. I had the most strange experience like recently with an Airbnb in Boston. And we get down there. <clears throat> And I was like, yeah, we're just getting into, like, it was, like, an apartment, mm -hmm. condo thing. And he was like, oh, uh, I'm not in the city. Uh, I need you to go out to this address and nope. pick up the keys and all this stuff. And I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> so we went all the way out oh there, God. got the lock box. It had all of his keys to all the different Airbnbs that he owned. And I, was like, I could have just went into any one of your places, and they were all that labeled with nice. the address on them. Or made a copy of them. Yeah, that's like... true. Oh, gosh, yeah. That's very trusting of him. It was a really nice place that we oh, stayed good. Like good. John, I like John Mulaney said, going. don't go to a secondary location. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> Street smarts. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, I was traveling alone at that time, so mm -hmm. I was meeting up with people. Um, okay, so our next question is, how do you adjust to a new culture and being away from your family? Um, I feel like for this one, it depends, obviously, on, like, where you're going, because I would say a lot of, like, the European countries that you can study abroad to, like, the culture isn't too drastically different from ours. Um, some of the things that you might come across is, like, language, um, differences in language, or um, just, like, the vernacular that people use on the day-to-day -day that you might have to learn, but um, I would just say in preparation, just looking up a lot of the do's and don'ts um, of the area that you're going to because um, that'll be huge especially if you're going to a place that's like a lot different than ours I would say like maybe if you're coming from the U.S. and going to I don't know what cultures would you say are like a lot different because you guys studied abroad in Europe so they're all they're, like they're so all different yeah, yeah they are there's okay. just like yeah. so many different even London whichever place yeah. is the same I feel like how you said European is very similar to how mm -hmm. we act is especially like manner wise yeah um, but if you go like Japan yeah. and, and like certain things like with the, the, the way you hold your chops yeah right and, like you want to know yes. those things yeah yeah yeah, you want to definitely, like, I agree, like, the Jews and Jones, because you yeah. want to fit in with the culture. You want to, like, you want to adjust to the culture. You don't want their culture adjusting to you. Like, yeah. you're going to have to change some things a little bit. Or, like, like embrace it. Yeah. yeah. And also not be disrespectful. Like, that's exactly. a huge thing, I feel like, just understanding, like, gestures, words, yeah. like, facial expressions, all of that, that could come across as, like, disrespectful yeah. or rude. Like, you don't want to be making any enemies when you're yeah. out abroad. So, um, yeah. That's Once again, bad. don't be that American. Yeah. <laughs> One of the um. biggest adjustments in London is that um, cars have the right-of-way. 
Yep. Oh, really? And so, coming from oh, Boston, yeah. I'm right. a bit of a jaywalker. Yeah. Um, People jaywalk there all the time, though, They definitely London. do, though. Yeah. But, but they I'm do at their like, own risk. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely are very more, okay, you're going to, like, you're coming, but you'll slow down for mm. me. In London, they actually told me of a story where an old man was trying to cross the street, and a car was coming, and, didn't, like, didn't see him in time. Like, he wasn't aiming to hit him, but hit sure. him, and the car sued the old man, and... He had to wow. pay, but he was the one that got injured. Like it's yeah. just, it's crazy. But you just gotta be respectful of that. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> know that. Just know. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Do, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna want to know that. Do yeah. do some research beforehand too, um, just so that you're not being super offensive. Uh, mm-hmm. There were some instances in Ireland where there are just some like, I can't even get into it, uh, where I was just like shaking my head. So there's whole bunch of political stuff involved but oh. and like there was like stuff that like kids had learned about in class and they completely ignored it and they're like it's fine I'm an American they just don't care and I'm like they do though like you're yeah. being super insulting to them and we went through so many like we had to before we even went to Ireland we had to go to this like pre-leaving thing uh, and they like explained like cultural norms mm-hmm. uh, like they explained the pub culture and they were like pub culture is very important you go there and you don't get drunk. You you if you're gonna drink, you yeah. have like a beer or two. Uh, you it's also completely acceptable for you to just drink soda or just drink juice the, or just drink water the whole night. Like, it's it's about meeting up with other friends. And they were like, you have to be involved in this, but don't mess it up. Yeah. yeah. I do think, like, embracing the culture is, like, super important for adjusting, but also just for, like, your experience mm-hmm. in general. Because what's the point of going and studying abroad or traveling to a new place if you're just going to stay with your same habits and, yeah. you know, do the same thing that you do here? It's, you know, going to be a lot more fun, and I think it'll help you get, like, the most out of the experience if when you go, you're, like, trying your best yeah. to, like, incorporate, you know, their culture and their different things. Yeah, and join things like Meetup. Meetup Meetup.com is really great for interacting with locals in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. Going back to our safety thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that way you can can ask them about their culture and be like, so how can I really interact with Spanish culture? Uh, I don't think I've done enough of it. Uh, And looking up certain regulations and things, like I was in Italy and this kid was so annoyed because the museums weren't open on Monday. And I said, well, the museums are open on Sunday for the tourists, so Italians don't work on Monday. He's like, but I'm here all the time. And I was like, cool. Okay. <laughs> the Italians don't work on Mondays because they're not supposed to work on Sundays because they're extremely Catholic, and they do. Yeah. So maybe be like, like learn th- little things like that. Be considerate. Um, yeah, be considerate yeah. and learn th- ways to save money. So in Italy... If you sit down at a restaurant, you're automatically getting an upcharge. Whereas if you like stand mm-hmm. at a bar, um, you it costs less. So like, I went with my roommate and I was like, I really want an espresso, and she's like, Oh, we'll go sit down at the cafe. I'm like, Nope, that's a twelve euro cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. I just want a quick shot of espresso. Yeah. We're gonna go stand at the espresso bar. Um, so learning awesome. little things like that. Yeah. One of the first things. things they told us when we went to London is that you don't tip when you go oh, out yeah. to a restaurant. Yes. Um, my parents came to visit me, and my dad is a generous tipper, mm-hmm. and this was a bit of a huge adjustment for him. Yeah, uh, in some places they find it tips. Um, <laughs> they find it insulting, right. yeah, especially yeah. in like fancy like in France, being um, a waiter is like a profession. Yeah. Um, so they find it insulting when you tip sometimes. So yeah. don't do that. <laughs> Those are good things to do. Yeah. And they went through a lot of, like, some of the cultural norms, at least for, like, the area we were staying in during our first day at the orientation. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, they even had, like, one of the police officers come into our orientation and say some of the things that are illegal mm-hmm. for us to do. Because oh, uh, <laughs> it's good, too, though. Good, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can't have pepper spray. <laughs> uh, a lot of kids brought pepper spray because yeah. they were like, I'm traveling, I want something right. to protect myself. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to give you this time to throw that away before you get in trouble. Yeah. So he, they were very nice, yeah. but they did like give you a heads up about those kind of things. Yeah, I feel That's like, true. as Karen was saying, like meet up and locals, trying to find people that are local, it's, it's kind of redundant, but uh, going out to places that are off local. the... I'm yeah. Local. <laughs> uh, going out to whatever they do for fun yep. versus there, there's a list of things you're like, I need to see this, this, and this. Yep. I really mm-hmm. want to do it. It's very touristy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but get off the beaten path and really 
jump head yeah. first and embrace yeah. the culture that you're in so that you have experiences to talk to that are not the same as other people Everyone. that have yes. been there. Because everybody goes to Paris like, oh, I went to the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Right. What else did you do? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, I, I would say just try to find people and go and do things that uh, they do for fun. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I think another part of adjusting is, you know, you're missing your family a lot. And I got all, the, like, the apps so I could... Um, FaceTime my family, mm -hmm. call them, mm -hmm. talk to them. Um, but I didn't do it too often. Like, I didn't talk to them every day. I probably, like, called them once a week. Um, and we have been FaceTime for, like, just a half an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, like, a, like they would show me my dog. It was, yeah. like, a oh, great yeah. experience. But I, like, I think calling your house too many times would make you more upset and, like, yeah. missing home more. Yeah, I think it's just yeah. college in general. Like, yeah. 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 freshmen don't. I think going back to like what you guys said, like junior year, you're already away from home for those yep. two years. So you're kind of already used to being away from home. So studying abroad, I feel like you're kind of used to it. I honestly feel like whenever I travel, I talk to my family more than when I was like at school and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that because I had more things to talk about and more yeah. things to tell them yeah. and update them as opposed to when I'm at school. They're like, oh, how was class? Like, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's the same. So yeah, you might find that like you talk to your family more and, yeah. and that's great, but like I don't feel like you need to, you know, don't feel like you have to talk to them every single second of every day yeah. um, either because you want to enjoy yourself and yeah I don't know about that I'm going get annoyed when I called her at college I was like what do you want are you coming <laughs> home I'm like home. no <laughs> <laughs> Just say it, yeah. you. All right, thank you so much for watching this episode of the College Express podcast. I hope you learned everything you need to know about traveling abroad. And then some. And then some. <laughs> yes, definitely. If you have any questions, direct them to Kara because she will no longer be with us. So <laughs> her email all day. Find her on Twitter. Find everything. Don't. And her yeah. phone number is. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. Spam my Twitter because I don't look at it. <laughs> but in all seriousness, thank you so much for all your hard work and all the podcast episodes that we've been Stop on together, on not cry. only the podcast, <laughs> no. but the Colin Express and all that work you do there. So I'm we're going to miss you greatly. I'm going to miss all you guys. Who are you going to miss the most? The podcast. <laughs> good answer, good answer. Uh, thank you so much, Taylor, for coming in and joining us yay, today. Yay, thanks for having me, guys. This is awesome. Yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, if you guys don't already know, uh, we do this once a month at the start of the month. We release a episode Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then Friday is the entire thing. So one question gets answered Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Whole episode goes out Friday. If you have any questions you'd like to know, please drop them in the comment section below or reach out to us on College Express. And follow College Express on all of the social media so you can get up to date with everything like going on. Like and subscribe. On. And gives back is next College week. College Express gives back is coming up. So get ready for that. That's going to be fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Take care.